Hey there YouTubers, this is the Scranton Strangler and today I have a really awesome video about one of the coolest dynamics of The Office throughout the years, which is the couples that we grow to love and to even hate in the case of like Ryan and Kelly Kapoor or even Michael Scott and Holly Flax if you feel that way. So what I want to do is I want to focus on the greatest couple in the history of The Office. Did you think it was Jim and Pam? The greatest couple in the history of The Office clearly is Phyllis Lappin and Bob Vance from Vance Refrigeration. Now I'm going to give you my top five reasons as to why I think that they are the greatest couple that has ever appeared on screen of The Office. And I have a feeling that by the end of this video, you're going to be agreeing with me as well. So you know what, let's kick this off. Let's start with the number one reason why I think that Phyllis and Bob are the greatest couple in The Office. And we'll start out really easily. They've never had a fight throughout the entirety of the series. We've never seen these two characters have any kind of crossword with one another. Obviously, we've never seen them physically fight. The most we've seen is Phyllis hold Bob Vance back from one time when I guess Phyllis told Bob that someone had done something wrong to her. And then Bob came up right away, was willing to fight for her, not with her, of course. But otherwise, we've never seen a fight come from these two. Obviously, we've seen fighting come from some of the best couples ever. Examples of these couples that have fought with one another, Andy Bernard and Aaron Hannon they had fought each other. Michael Scott and Holly Flax had fought. Obviously, Jan and Mike fought all the time. Carol and Mike even had a little bit of a fight. And of course, the golden couple that we all look forward to, Jim and Pam, they have had a lot of fights, particularly in the latter seasons, but they are typically known as the greatest couple and they had their ups and downs. Now, does that make them a more realistic couple compared to what's real in life? Yeah, maybe. Maybe that is absolutely the case. However, if we're going by who is really the perfect couple, the best couple, then this surely goes in the favor of Bob Vance and Phyllis. The next reason is that these two have constant PDA, public displays of affection. They constantly hug and touch each other all the time. I mean, I'm, the spot I remember off the top of my head while thinking about this was when Phyllis dared to cut in front of Stanley and Michael in the pretzel line during the Pretzel Day episode, aka Initiation, that was during season three of The Office. Bob almost got in a fight with Michael and Stanley over Phyllis simply kissing and cutting the line, but still, it was meant to have like hugs and kisses and stuff. Michael and Stanley were just not dealing with it, and Bob wasn't backing down, even though Phyllis eventually went to the back of the line. Now, kind of piggybacking off that reason, it's going to be the third reason here, which is they were crazy into sex with one another. Oh my god. There were no couples on this show that could compete with Phyllis and Bob in a sex marathon. I am thoroughly convinced. I know Ryan and Kelly had their whole sex thing that they were doing for a long period of time, but no, no. Phyllis and Bob are the horses I choose if they ever have a sex marathon for sure. I mean, these two banged all the time. Like, they had lunch with Jim and Pam during the show's final season where Bob and Phyllis were gone for like 45 minutes and they were clearly doing some really just raunchy stuff in the back. Bathroom. And this kind of thing was happening since season two of the show. It had dated all the way back to when Phyllis and Bob were first kind of mentioned as a couple. So this has been going on throughout the entirety of it. I mean, in addition to what we actually saw on camera, remember when Phyllis was telling Aaron Hannon how to win over Andy Bernard? This is when she was like, I really like Andy. I want to see what I can do to try to win him over. And Phyllis tells this whole story about how she and Bob did this whole weird form of bestiality roleplay sex, and she couldn't have been more turned on reminiscing about how this went down. I just, I loved hearing about it. It was great. It showed another dynamic to Phyllis, because, like, Michael tried to downplay her as this, like, really, I don't know, kind of, like, sweet old lady, although he did call her Easy Rider, implying that she was kind of slutty back in high school, but you definitely don't get that. She's, like, the kindly lady with catchphrases when it rains. But she's really also the person that apparently is into having sex with guys in dog suits. So, um, yeah, these two really, it's clear that they love having sex with one another. And so much so that they don't even look to cheat. They're just like, hey, let's make it a little weird and change things up a bit by wearing some costumes and stuff. So that is a huge reason why they're going to get a big point and a W on this one for best couple. And for my fourth reason, Bob sent... Phyllis a ton of stuff on Valentine's Day back in season two, episode 16. This is the episode where Pam is really just excited about the idea that Roy is gonna get her something really cool for Valentine's Day, but instead she had to sit there at reception and see all of these really elaborate and cool gifts being sent in by people who loved other people in the office. And what she saw most frequently were gifts sent by Bob Vance 
two Phyllis, like several arrangements of flowers and a massive teddy bear that only kind of pissed Pam off, rightly so. But regardless, it could have been anyone in the entire office that got these things or even were sent them. But Bob Vance was the one uh, within the complex that did it. So it's just another example of how they're just terribly committed to one another and that they really love each other and they're willing to send it out fiscally or emotionally and verbally. So pretty impressive. And the final reason why these two are clearly meant for one another and they should be enshrined as the greatest couple in the entirety of this series. Bob bid a thousand dollars and one penny on an effing hug from Phyllis during the episode Cry Maid. I don't know if you remember this episode all that well, but this is the episode where kind of all their stuff was taken in the office after Holly and Michael had, like, they first had sex in the office and forgot to lock it. So they ended up auctioning off a bunch of things, and one of the things Phyllis put up was a hug. And Bob, being the amazing, loving husband that he is, kept bidding up. And now Dwight bid up too, but that's because he was going through his own conflict and stuff like that. But even he gave up when Bob Vance, the person who was married to Phyllis, raised the bid to $1,000 in one penny. Wow. Wow, that was a huge sign of commitment. He just basically gave away $1,000 just to make her feel kind of good about it. Now, the fun thing about it is, kind of going back to reason number three, where they're crazy into sex with one another, she supposedly repaid him later that night with what can only be assumed excellent coitus, by their standards at least, which seems to be some pretty damn high standards when it comes to sex. So, that is another reason why these two are an amazing couple. We barely hear about... Jim and Pam have sex, even though Michael asked about it quite a bit, but these two clearly are the greatest couple in the entire series. They love each other, they never had fights, they were consistent with one another, they had great communication. Clearly they talked about the things they really, really wanted and didn't want. So I tip my hat to you, Phyllis and Bob Vance, for holding it down and giving the rest of us hope that there can be romance in the world. So what did you think of this video? Do you think that Bob and Phyllis really are the greatest couple in the office? Do you think it's Jim and Pam, which is kind of the obvious one? Or you want to go out there with some other ones like a Michael Scott and a Holly Flax? Let me know down below in the comment section. I would love to hear some of your opinions on this topic because I love nerding out about all this kinds of stuff. And of course, make sure you hit that subscribe button. I'm going to be putting out a lot more videos focused on The Office, kind of similar to this one. I'll do some top tens. I'll go into some theories. I'll talk about why Toby definitely isn't the Scranton Strangler. Obviously, I am. And that's pretty much what's going to be this channel. I mean, I'm going to do a ton of Office stuff focused for all the Office fans out there like myself. You'll even get some trivia, which will be fun. So hit that subscribe button to make sure that I get motivated to keep making all of it. <laughs> and that's going to do it. This is the Scranton Strangler signing out and saying stay safe for now.